once again. Thank you all for joining us. This is Nuance, and I am Mike Scala, joined by Jay Carter, also known as Timid, the hip-hop artist and a chair of BLM Tokyo. What's going on, Jay? Oh, long night. Getting this morning started. Got a little bit of a smile on my face, and I'm sure we're going to get into that. Yes, and it is morning over there in Japan, of course, evening here in the U.S. We are joined once again by Sheba Abraham from the League of Women Voters. What's going on, Sheba? Oh, well, we're uh, the, league, uh, the league at this time. We're going to have um, a discussion on the affirmative action um, that was uh, the, that was recently um, passed by the uh, Supreme Court. We're opening it up to our members and to the public to see how they feel and get their thoughts and feedbacks, which will be happening August 15th. Okay. Yes, of course, we covered on here how the Supreme Court overturned affirmative action when it came to college emissions, right? And now there's a concern that mm-hmm. that might trickle down into other areas, too. Yeah. Right. Well, I am What's going on with you? flight to Mexico in the morning. That's why I got my fish shirt on. I'm all ready. I thought you looked a little bit vacation-y, like relaxed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My mind is in Cancun already, so you'll pardon me. You need me. a straw hat. That's right. That's uh, right. You're going on vacation? I'm going to Cancun for a week. One of my cousins oh. is getting married, but I'm going to stay there for oh, a few days nice. and enjoy myself. Yeah. That's what's, That's what's up. I have yet to go to Mexico. But it's not a vacation entirely because I am bringing my mixes with me. I'm obsessed with getting this correct. And... You're going to like this, Jay. One of the things I'm doing now is listening to them at low volumes, very low volumes, sure. and trying to pick out words that stand out that you might not hear at high volumes, right? It's like, oh, wait a minute. All of a sudden, these two words, they sound much louder than the other words. When I was blasting it, I couldn't tell, but now I can tell. And now I'm trying to make sure it sounds consistent even in high quiet volumes. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, mixing can be a, an obsessive process. <laughs> I know most people I talk to are like, you're just overthinking it. You're overworking it. Just put it out because they want to hear the music. And I get that. I just put it out already. But now I want to make sure when it comes out, it's sounding as good as possible. It's the first thing I'm putting out in a while. So there's no real real rush, I don't think. I'm trying to get it right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So from what I've heard so far, it sounds good. It's a lot of good, um, it's not a good uh, topics on the, on the album. Yes, and, yes. Uh, Thank you. And also the handcuffs video, one of the songs that we're going to be putting out. We right. got the new draft of it in. We actually hired an actor in Colombia to play one of the roles in that video. So looking forward to getting that out too. That's what's up. Yes, yes. But we've got some things to cover and we don't want to go long. I know we said that last week. We did go long. But I, <laughs> I do want to ask you about this woman who was at NYU. I guess she was just a student at the time. And she was going to work with us. And now she put it on Twitter that, or I guess little Kim put on Twitter that she wrote her autobiography. Right. Well, yeah. So I guess it seems like little Quint, little Kim is coming out with, with her autobiography and um, she posted up, I guess the, the title page on the inside of the book talking about something like coming soon and whatnot. And um, it had the name of, I'm assuming is the writer you know, because I don't think Lil' Kim wrote it herself. She probably worked with the writer. And so the name on the writer was uh, someone familiar to us. When we, Like you said, when we were going to do the radio show at uh, NYU, um, we weren't students of NYU, which you had to be students of NYU. And uh, she was our she was the student at NYU that was going to basically get us the spot. And um, the first day of recording, she just didn't show up and didn't. I haven't heard from her since. <laughs> and we're talking like 20 years ago, right? Almost. It was, it was a while. Yeah, it was a while back. Um, so I know she's been had been doing her thing in hip hop uh, journalism for, you know, since then. Um, so, yeah, just recognize the name when it popped up. Isn't that kind of funny, though? She flakes on us. We haven't heard from her in 20 years. And then she pops up a little Kim's autobiography. Yeah, it was. It's interesting. Uh, and. I don't even know where we found her. I think you might have found her. I don't know how oh, we found her. I think it was you. I think it was MySpace. 
I don't remember how we found her. Maybe we put out a post looking for someone. Could be. Um, I remember that what we did do is is we tried to to go forth anyway and went through and and cut the radio show. We went into the studio. We did everything, and then uh, even before, right before the broadcast, I guess came out. It was like uh, what was it the producer or the the manager, whoever it was, came out. Was like uh, word on the street is uh, you guys aren't even students. <laughs> word on the street. But you know what? There was a snitch, and I know who the rat was. The, uh -oh. It was a very cutthroat thing at the time because we went in for training. That's what it was, right? They gave us training, and we had to do a sample show and everything. So there were other people there that were also going through the same process, and they were also trying to get shows on. And I guess it was kind of competitive. Not every show in planning, right. Not, not, right, not every uh, proposed show was going to make it. And so – there was someone else who was trying to get on the air as well. And he was asking us questions like, what dorm do you guys stay at? Oh, you don't stay at a dorm? What, what is your major? And he, was, he kept like trying to like prod into and try to figure out if we were students or not. And it must have been him who went and told on us that we weren't students. Right. right. So and I think that 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 because it happened that day. Right. Because it was like after we had already cut the demo. I remember yeah. we went into the office of whoever was running it and then had that conversation. But yeah. they liked our show. We actually recorded a sample show. And they right, said, your show right. sounds great. We would definitely put you on the air. But uh, we're on the street. It's not even students here. Yeah. And I think we were still holding out for this woman to come right. in. That's why we didn't just bail. We thought, okay, let's just go through it. Maybe she'll show up later or tomorrow or whatever. And she just never got back to us. Yeah, maybe something happened. You know, yeah. anything could happen at that point. So, yeah. Uh, it's too bad. Yeah, it's too bad. And that is how... That show, damn, what's the name of it? I think DJ Eclipse was the DJ for a long time. It was a hip-hop show that aired on WNYU for many years. It might still air on there. But the reason why they were able to get on the air and stay on the air is because they had students who were officially running it. But it was really right. the same people in hip-hop, DJs and, and so forth, year after year, who were not students, who were the personalities and the people running the show. Right. And that was the biggest, you know, one of the biggest hip-hop shows, longest-running hip-hop shows. The halftime show. The halftime show. The halftime show, yeah. So, so I don't think that's running anymore. No, no, no. Because I think they 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 moved to. Um, didn't they move to like uh, Sirius or F XM or whatever that is? Possibly, possibly. Yeah, I don't think they're doing the halftime show anymore. So they're doing it, but not at WNYU. Um. Well. Clips and them are doing um, a show on, wait, they're doing a show on Shade 45. Okay. Because um, they played the, the, my last single. Right, right. I remember that now. I'm sorry. So, yeah, the wake-up show is, is, is been done, I think. The wake-up show is different from the halftime show. I mean, show. the halftime show, sorry, yeah. Yeah, and you know what's funny? I just got a text earlier today from nyu asking me for money because i now am officially an nyu alum because the school i went to merged with nyu so i wonder if i were to try to do something like that now if they would let me in because i'm an alum that could be a route <laughs> <laughs> new halftime show it works what school? revenge what school did, yeah yeah right what school did you go to mike that merged with nyu it was polytechnic university oh really it became nyu poly yeah oh when did that has that happened was it some time ago or yeah not long after i graduated i graduated in oh, okay. 2005 and a few years after that and i think at the time i graduated they were already in talks because the idea was that my school didn't have a liberal arts department it was really all engineering it was a very technical scientific school and nyu mm -hmm. didn't have engineering so it was a good mix mm. nice Absolutely. My undergraduate degree is in computer science. People can't believe, like, you're a lawyer. How are you in computer science? It's wild. You know, I have varied interests, as people see. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> so, speaking of varied interests, RFK is all over the place. You don't want to talk too much about that, but I know you, you watch some of the interviews, right? Uh -huh. um, yeah. Oh, you're going to say something, Sheba? Go ahead. Yeah, I watched when he, he was on Hannity one evening. RFK. Okay. He was on Hannity um, and he was uh, discussing um, some of the issues that are ha happening today. But um, 
he uh the the crowd is like they are so applauding you know applauding and and sometimes it's hard to uh really understand what's going on not understand but uh hear what's going on because of the of uh, people being like yay he's here and mm. he <laughs> You I do get that sometimes Kennedy. just because he's a Kennedy. I think people kind of still, I mean, you know, and some of it is understandable. His uncle was the president, right? His father looked like he was going to be the president uh-huh, and was uh-huh, going to be uh-huh. a lot of legacy uh-huh. there, right? But right. it's funny, sometimes people kind of give him that royal treatment, it seems. Right. They, I mean, they kind of refer to, to the Kennedy family as like uh, America's royal family uh, yeah. in many regards. So he was also on... Um, uh, a hip hop show like uh, Math Hoffa's. Um, uh, I can't. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, my expert opinion. My expert opinion. Math Hoffa has it. His um, YouTube show where he has interviewers on, and mostly it's uh, hip hop artists, and they come on and have these long, extended interviews, a couple of hours. And so, uh, RFK is on one of the most recent shows, and um, I went and watched. You know, probably about an hour's worth of it. I think they did a two-hour interview, um, which is the um, and they put up clips. And so the clips that I watched were um, came up on hours worth. And so it kind of for me, it kind of started off a little bit slow because it just was talking a little bit about his 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 background, and it seemed very uh, very much like he was catering to the audience where he was at because he kept talking about his experience with uh, African Americans and African American community. And so that kind of was like. Uh, um, but then later he got That's kind a- of a catch 22, I think, in that if he didn't, I think there would be criticism that he didn't say what he wanted to do for the black community. Well, yeah, that he got too. But in the beginning, it was like, OK, well, you know, Math Hoffa asked him, like, OK, well, what um, for those who don't know you, tell us a little bit about you. Right. Anyway, right into that. I saw that. And then he went right into talking about, yeah, I, I did this and we did this with Dr. King and then this with the black community. It's like, dude, like, you know, it sound it sounded like he was catering to me. That, um, yeah, that sounds a little did, bit like pandering because he probably wouldn't have answered it that way in a different right, way. Right, right. And so, I mean, this is just your intro, your 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 yeah. intro reviews. Like, that wasn't necessary yet. But he did get in some deep topics later on which you don't hear a lot of candidates uh, especially presidential candidates uh much less politicians period talk about um where he talked about his um his drug addiction um you know he had spent he had spent a little bit of time in prison um in and, puerto rico right it was the protest um yeah but also i think he did in he spent a summer in in New York in a prison. Oh, really? If, he did. That was years ago. Yeah. Was that civil disobedience also? Huh? I, I don't know what it was for. I don't know what it was for. But you know, he talked extensively about his um, drug addiction, um, the stuff that he did, um, the drugs that he took, and and getting trying to get clean and um, that type of stuff. Um, he also went over some of the things um, that. A lot of people would like to hear talked about, which he's talking about how, um, you know, certain types of um, corporate actions or societal actions or systemic racism actions affects the black community. Um, And he was giving out some numbers and statistics on that. Um, You know, so it it gave a good uh, a good interview in that regard. And I'm, I'm eager to watch the rest of it when they put the full thing out Um, and the comment section was like, oh, my God, who is this guy? We've never heard of him before. Uh, I'm definitely going to vote for him. And this has never him. heard of RFK Jr. before. If you're not into politics, I guess. You know, I yeah, mean, you could say Kennedy and people have heard Kennedy, but. Yeah, yeah I guess. So, um, yeah, so that'll be, you know, that was interesting that he oh, went well, on that on that show to do it. And you, you have to read something else. Oh, yeah. Something else too. He's been kind of. They've been kind of quiet. The Kennedy family, and I don't. Right. I think we just started uh, entering politics uh, to become come be, to be to the forefront on the issues that are happening now uh, mm. that he's concerned about. But you hadn't heard about them being in politics for a while. So that's yeah, why well, people recently one about. of them I think was in Congress in Massachusetts, right? And he ran for Senate and lost in the primary. Right. Right. So you know, it's interesting, though, with RFK, because a lot of the mainstream media outlets portray him as this crazy, 
right wing type lunatic or a conspiracy theorist. And they basically try to keep him from getting a lot of coverage or certainly positive coverage or interviews like that. So it seems like he's trying to take more of a creative approach and finding these outlets that will give him a chance because he's being shut down a lot. Right. And and mm-hmm. I didn't get the sense that he was the this crazy off the wall type of guy. Um, and they didn't go into um, his his stance on the vaccine um, for for fear of either being demonetized or whatever, getting a strike mm-hmm. on YouTube. They they kind of they 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 agreed to step away from that. And they passed yeah, imagine that part that that's why they were doing it. They didn't even say the word. They just said the V. Um. They said, don't mention they mentioned that's why they were staying away from the topic. Right. Yeah. Um, And he'd said he got into trouble that. um, And then, of course, he mentioned some of the stuff um, about his his uncle and and father being assassinated. And um, some of the I guess would some people would consider conspiracy theories. He would have Uh his own ideas on those. So they did touch on that a bit. And um, math math Hoffa had asked the math or Mecca, one of them asked them about that. It's like with, you know, with this history, basically that you believe in like that, that they, those, they are the ones that killed um, your uncle and killed your father. These are the people in the government. And he even named a couple of people's names as far as that's involved in this corruption. He said, with the fact that they've already killed your uncle and your father, aren't you worried that you talking like this and going for president that you could be, a target as well. Yeah, that was and, Becca who asked that. Right, right. So, uh, and then it's an you know um, an understandable question. So he said, you know, it kind of it is what it is, I guess, from his perspective. Yeah, I mean, if you have people gunning for you like that, not that any, anyone really wants it, or most people don't want that kind of attention, right. but it does show that you are prominent enough. You're, you're you inspire fear in people, so you kind of feel like you're doing something right if you're scaring. Right people at the top or people you know who have an interest in keeping things the way they are and who right. will actually resort to violence. I mean, if they're willing to go to those depths, obviously you want to protect yourself, but it also is a signal that you're making real change in the world. Right. And that's right. kind of a badge of honor. And, and we're talking about, I mean, when you're dealing with the circles that he's in, you're talking about people that have the highest levels of power in all different aspects of, of the country. So, yeah, I mean, he's playing in the, in the big game. In that regard, um, one thing that he did say that I really found kind of refreshing was that oh, did we lose Mike? It's like we might have lost Mike for a sec. But one thing that he did say that uh, I found refreshing was that um, when he was talking about his his um, drug issues and being arrested and whatnot, uh, mm-hmm. he mentioned he he said that you know he could have basically gotten away with any of it and never saw any sort of um, punishment or anything for it because of who he is. Like he acknowledged that the privilege that he has, that the weight that his family's name carries and the connections that he's like, really, I could have not even been held accountable for anything, which would have been horrible for me. Um, So he was happy that some of these things did happen as far as arrests or getting held accountable or getting busted at the airport um and all this and that so being a acknowledging that was was right. pretty refreshing well, right yeah go ahead sheila no i said at least he um he uh took through his he became he was responsible for his actions um it's uh and that's a far cry from you know everyone's talking about um biter it's a hunter hunter biter what's his uh biden side biden? yeah and people are feeling like he he nor his father are taking responsibility for his actions. And I think that's why they're talking. Uh, it's being spoken on so much and constantly. Mm. But he just took a plea deal. Right. So he's getting in trouble, too. Yeah. I mean, if he and if he did did all that he's accused of doing, then, yeah, he should get into trouble. It doesn't matter if his, his father is yeah. the president. Yeah. And uh-huh. the White House signaled they would not pardon him, which is interesting. Right. And they shouldn't. Listen, if he did it, you know, yeah. So so speaking of accountability, we want to get into this law in Texas, right? And, you know, it's not New York. And so some people might think, well, why do we care? But it's interesting to look at what states are doing around the country. And we do have an audience who are beyond New York as well. So for the sake of discussion, let's get into it here. 
there is a law that was passed and signed in Texas, right, saying that if you are a drunk driver, if you're convicted of drunk driving and you kill someone who is a parent, you are responsible for that child's child support. Right. So this is a uh, HB 393. It was signed by the governor um, this uh, last month and it goes into effect on September 1st. And so if you're convicted of that, then you're required to pay uh, child support to the victim's minor children. I mean, if both parents are killed and one parent is killed, regardless, um, you're going to have to be uh, accountable financially uh, until the child turns 18 or until they graduate from high school. Right. Um, and it, this it, might seem out of the ordinary or a little extreme, but it isn't too crazy when you consider the fact that restitution does often come with criminal convictions, maybe not in this exact form, but now you're right. saying this, but it isn't all the way out there either. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so they say even if you're if you're not eligible to or if you're not able to pay while he's in prison or the person's in prison, then they have to pay when they get when they're released within start paying within a year after they're released. So I think it's interesting. And I wonder if. If other states might copy something in that regard. Well, according to the article, um, that I uh, am reading as we speak, there are four states who have passed their own version of this law, which is called, really? uh, yes, four, four other states. And there's another um, another uh, woman. It's a Mothers Against Drunk, a mothers against drunk Driving. Um, they are uh, behind yeah, this law in some form. And um, it's called Bentley's, Bentley's Law. OK, which of the four states do you have that in front of you? No, I don't know which of the four states, but I know one of the women, she's from Missouri and she's trying to get her the bill passed in her state. Hmm. Because I was going to say that does sound like a very Texas thing. I could see a state like Virginia, maybe not as much anymore, but certainly 10 years ago, 20 years ago, Virginia would do things like that. They would be very harsh, especially when it comes to penalties on the road. There are certain states, maybe even Florida would think of that. In a state like New York, you might find a little bit more resistance to it. And I'm, I'm wondering what might people be resistant to in that regard? I think it seems overly punitive to some. Well, you know what the what can happen when they say a drunk driver. Now, when the do- drunk driver hits and kills a person, uh, a family member. And that's your sole support. Right. What happens to the other? What happens to the drunk driver's family? Is his wife now? Does she have to come in? Does she have to be involved in that verdict to help support or pay? This? I don't know. It yeah, and you have to ask also. Okay, you're targeting drunk drivers, which is one thing, but do you stop at that? What if someone just is driving negligently and they're not drunk? Why shouldn't they be responsible for child support? Why is it only drunk drivers? Right. What about people who are intoxicated on marijuana or or another drug? Is that covered by this or is it it just alcohol? Right. Um, That I didn't clarify, but it just says uh, it was looks like it's talking about drunk drivers only. And why Mm -hmm. is it only driving then? Right. What if you you kill someone else? You know, you kill a parent in another context. You're not behind the wheel of the car. It's some other right. accident or I don't know. Let's say you have a gun and, and, and you fire it errantly and, and you end up killing someone. Are you not responsible for child support then? But if you were drunk driving, you would be. Why is drunk driving the distinction here? Right. Um, yeah. Those are good questions. I mean, yeah. you could even think the same. You know, I can see people pushing to apply it in other areas like that. Um, right. I think, and of course, the idea, I would imagine the idea behind this is that it's going to curb drunk driving. Sure. right? And the reason I'm sure why it applies to drunk drivers is because groups like MAD have been lobbying for this specifically. That's their goal, right? That's, That's their thing. agenda. Yeah. But yeah. I think you have to start asking yourself these questions when you're asking, is a good policy? Should we look to enact it here in our state or what have you? You have to look at the ramifications of it. Why is it only this one area? Um is it a good thing to force someone to pay child support anytime they kill a parent, even accidentally, let's say negligently or you know, whatever the case may be. 
Should we right. be doing that? Maybe we should. I don't know, but I don't know if we should be limiting the context of it. Right. If it, yeah, just it brings up a lot of questions, right? Like I said, like where is there a limit? Like should should it go to other areas? Um, and and the judge apparently the judges the judge will uh, when when trying to decide what how much restitution they pay they're going to take into a lot of different factors um, like uh, the child's financial educational needs uh, it says here physical and emotional conditions standard of living. Um, resources that their surviving parent or guardian has and the the financial resources of the offender. So it doesn't sound like they're going to be responsible for 100% of child support. It just sounds like they're going to have to pay something. Mm -hmm. Some might look at this as a form of cruel and unusual punishment, if not cruel, unusual. (laughs) Really? But, you know, think about it, Mike. If, If, say, for instance, if your, if your wife or your husband, if they're that drunk driver and they have to pay that child support, how much of how much uh, is his wife going to be involved? Right. Yeah, it's true. Right. It, it affects the drunk driver's family. Sheba, why are you assuming the drunk driver is the is the man? It could have been the oh, woman. No, that I mean, did. It could be the woman. <laughs> Well, then then the husband can be involved. I mean, well, Jay, why are you assuming the drunk driver is not a lesbian? Well, still, a lesbian would still be a man or woman. All right. Well, then with the wife, the wife could be involved, even if it is a woman. Yeah, Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. Very true. So from what I'm reading here, there's similar uh, New York State is considering uh, Bentley's law. Mm. And the other states that they have uh, set, uh, um, considering or um, modeling legislation after the Bentley law, Bentley's law are uh, Missouri, Alabama, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Illinois, and Pennsylvania. The first ones you named were pretty consistent with the Texas. Right. Thing, right. right? Like, I, I, I don't know. I kind of think that this would be a more popular idea in conservative states. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh-huh. Um, and then, but on the flip side, like you said, it, some people might think it's, you know, it goes beyond it's cruel and unusual, or it's, it's, you know, too punitive. Um, I would see the argument on this side saying, well, you took a parent away, you know, that's right. That's permanent. True. So. I, I mean, you didn't know it was going to be a parent. No, but you're acting negligently. I mean, we already know that's drunk driving true. is against more the than, law. That's, that's more than negligent, oh. either, right? That's reckless because you yourself knew what you were doing and you knew that uh-huh. that was a potential consequence of your actions. Right, right. I mean, it, as long as as Mothers Against Drunk Driving has been around, it's been a consistent effort of educating people on the dangers of uh, drunk, drunk driving. Yeah. So right. We're, we're so, all yeah. aware right. of, of that. So the idea is that you're consciously disregarding the risk by putting yourself in that position, right? Negligence is you didn't know, but you should have known. This is even beyond that. This is you really did know that it could happen. Uh-huh. I think, you know, I think in some ways, yes. Um, but it's kind of very commonplace in the States to be like, oh, yeah, well, it's I mean, there is a legal allowed limit right. like you had two three drinks and it's still legally allowed whereas that can uh, well, contrast maybe that it depends on your blood alcohol level right well, right right yeah, but, but, it, but to, to japan has a zero tolerance if you've had one drop no yeah. there's no driving and from what i've seen in my interactions with people here people adhere to that very strictly if they've had one one beer they've had a sip they don't well, drive but here's the question jay for how long um, what you know, if they do it going out that night, they don't they don't drive that night. That night, so is it like a twenty four hour period, or is it a twelve hour period, or how does that work? Um, I don't think people time time their things between drinks, but usually, I've from what I've seen is like if someone had a you know, let's say it's you know eight p.m., someone's had a, a beer, a beer, and now you're talking about going somewhere at like you know eleven o'clock midnight, they'd probably be like, no, oh, I had a drink earlier, I'm not, I can't drive. Right. 
Um, but, so, but, but I'm law, I mean, you're saying this is a zero drop rule, right? But I mean, there's got to be some kind of limitation even in the law to measure that. Oh, sure. It's I'm sure any Paul, trace of alcohol at all in your blood. Right. I'm sure there is. I, yeah. I'm saying I was comparing that to how in the states where it's generally accepted, even in the law, to have one drink or two. You know, it, I mean, of course, it depends on blood alcohol level, but that usually right. equates to one or two drinks. And people there are don't commercials have now. Alcohol. I don't know if you've seen them on TV. They'll run commercials now saying that even with one drink, you can get a DUI. I mean, it depends, obviously, yeah. when, I guess, your body weight and how right. yeah. strong the drink is. Uh-huh. Even factors. But I think the, the thing is, like, it's just not thought about in the States. You know, if you drink one drink, no one's thinking of that as drunk, even though it could be your blood right. alcohol level could be very different. Right. right. And so is it is it so much negligent on, on the part of the person individually or is it just part of the society that doesn't? look at it as critically as maybe they should yeah but like you're saying though there are these persistent efforts from yeah. groups like mad you see the commercials on tv so we're mm-hmm. kind of bombarded with this idea that if you get behind the wheel you could kill someone if you had something absolutely like and so i think I that's why that. we look at it as more than just simple negligence we look at it like you consciously disregarded that risk right but what about the commercial about buzz driving have you seen that right they say buzz driving is drunk driving driving yeah, yeah buzz driving so that's uh, getting down to what um, uh, Timid is saying, um, that zero, you know, if you had, you have to have zero tolerance for alcohol before you get, you can't get behind the wheel. So I wonder how this will, how this will mix with the current law. Like if there's a legally allowed drinking limit um, or, or legally allowed uh, blood alcohol limit, if the person gets into a wreck and they're below that blood, blood alcohol limit, but there is alcohol in their blood, would they still be considered um, an intoxicated driver and be held accountable under this law? They wouldn't be under the plain English reading of it, right? You're saying intoxicated, but you're saying they're not intoxicated. Right. Under right. the law, they're not intoxicated, but they have alcohol in their blood. So right. I wonder if they're not going to get hit with a, a DUI if they're legally not intoxicated, right? Yeah, I guess it would also depend on who's going to wants to push the issue. Right. I guess someone could yeah. well pull up the law. I mean, if it's you have to be intoxicated, then you wouldn't be charged with it if you're not intoxicated. Right. Um, that's the idea from what I read from the article. But I'm just wondering if people are going to try to, you know, if there's going to be know, some what, sort yeah. of interplay in between those two things. All right. Yeah, because it doesn't give a limit. Right. It didn't say. Well, at least in the mm-hmm. article, it didn't. I'm sure the law has is much more detailed. The actual I'm, trying, I'm, so, I'm on the Texas legislature website now. I'm trying, I'm just trying to get the actual bill language in front of me. It's a three page bill. You have the actual bill. I see. OK, here's the bill. I see introduced House committee report and growth Senate committee enroll. So I'm not sure which of these links is the actual, but it might be this one introduced. Yeah, I, can't see it. I have it. I just, I just sent you the link. I have it. Mandatory restitution for child of victim of intoxication, manslaughter. See, and they've got intoxication, manslaughter as an offense. That's probably the probably name is. of the offense in Texas, meaning that you, right. you, you, were, you were under the influence and you killed someone, right? With your car. So if you weren't under the influence legally, it wouldn't apply. Right. So it's this very specific case of, uh, uh, intoxicated manslaughter seems like it's a very specific yeah. um, thing in in Texas. Right. It's part of their penal code. So it sounded like you, Sheba mentioned that New York might be considering something similar. Well, we've got to be careful with that because you see that reported in the media all the time. New York is considering it. And the thing is this, anyone in the legislature can introduce a bill to say anything. Right. So you might have one Republican uh-huh. or one anyone in office who, who introduces a bill. It doesn't mean that it's gaining any traction, it's going anywhere, or it's going to pass. But if someone introduces a bill, you will see the media often say the state is considering it because it's technically before the legislature, even though it'll be sitting in committee forever. Right. Yeah. I think this might be a good poll. See what people think about something like this. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like I'm going down the rabbit hole here. Where was I? I was just... Man. Starting to look up the Texas Penal Code. Yeah, here, you go. here you go. Intoxication manslaughter. So this is the section of the law that this legislation refers to. Mm-hmm. And it says a person commits an offense 
If the person operates a motor vehicle in a public place, operates an aircraft, a watercraft, or an amusement ride, or assembles a mobile amusement ride. That's funny. That's in there. <laughs> they assemble a mobile amusement ride, and they're, and they're intoxicated, and by reason of that intoxication, causes the death of another by accident or mistake. So, yeah, so they have to be intoxicated as legally defined. Right. It's interesting to me that they put assembling a mobile amusement ride. Listen, I, I completely get it. Uh, I completely get it. I don't know if it, maybe it's a so- Southern thing. I don't know if New York really has uh, the mobile, county fair? mobile fairs and county fairs like that, yeah. but they definitely have them in the South. And the, yeah. the, the image is of the operator being, you know, just a, a blue collar guy that drinks beer. Mm. And you don't want that person <laughs> assembling this, this right. carnival ride that you're about to go on. So I, I completely right. get that. Right. Yeah, well, they have county fairs here. And Are they the like mobile here. fairs yeah. that travel around? They're not as big here. You'll you'll see as yeah, yeah, like the Italian feasts, right? San Gennaro's yeah. feast. Sometimes a church has it, or like around Columbus Day, you'll see it in a church parking lot. They do pop yeah. up, and people are like, oh, let's go to the fair. Even in Howard Beach, yeah. you know, the fair mm-hmm. they have it, but yeah. it's not as big. I don't think as part of the culture as you'll see in the South. Right. No. But they so do I, have, I get, they I get that. in New York State. I yeah. get that inclusion. It sounds funny, but I totally it does get that. sound funny. But it's like, yeah, you're thinking of the guy drinking beers, putting together the ride, and like if he gets to plug something in or like put the cap on it and like leaves it all messed up. Yeah, you, know, you need to be a completely lucid when you're doing this. <laughs> I just don't think you would see that in the law in New York when you look up the definition of right. <laughs> whatever our version would be of that. I don't think it would say if they're assembling a, a mobile ride at the time. Right. <laughs> right. So. All right. So you want to you want to put the poll out? Yeah. You want to ask it? Um, I think you, you've got the verbiage down. Go, go for it. <laughs> All right. Well, our poll question of the week is should junk drivers who kill parents be responsible for the child support? Yeah. We should get some feedback. Looks looks like we got some messages in the chat here. Yeah, we should should get some varied opinions uh, on that. So, yeah, you know, I'm I'm not. I'm kind of I'm kind of on both sides of it. You know, I can see how. You know, I I can see that they should should contribute something. Um. But I could also see the other side as well. So yeah, because depending on your um, financial circumstances, you can become broke. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. If you or if, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, a child in a two-parent household, if they lose one yeah. of the parents, I mean, that parent may not be able to hang on their own. Or even if the child um, he loses both parents, or you know, then the child is up to the state or another family member. I mean, I can I can see that this is something that mm-hmm. is a preventable death. Yeah. In that you just just don't drink when you drive. I mean, it's it's very preventable. Yeah. Shout out to Christina, Diane and James joining us. Yes, yes. So yes. Connie, Connie was in, in there earlier, too. What's up, Connie? With the remainder of our time, we want to look at this latest indictment. To be fair, it just dropped today, and I haven't read it yet, so I figured it we just dropped. Like it's the new, <laughs> the new mixtape. It's the new DJ Khaled, another one. <laughs> the new Justice Department mixtape. Yeah. <laughs> so there are four counts here. Count one is conspiracy to defraud the U.S. Count two is conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding. Count three is obstruction of an attempt to obstruct an official proceeding. Count four is conspiracy against rights. So I'm interested to see what that entails. Right. So, yes, like I said, just dropped. Donald Trump is uh, indicted again. But, you know, it seems like the more they indict him, the more popular he becomes. With the Republican primary voters, certainly, yes. Yeah, it seems like the the more... I mean, it's it would be I mean, I can understand why, because the way he paints the narrative is that it's basically like a witch hunt against him. And so if he gets indicted, it kind of 
proves what he's saying to his supporters. And so uh-huh. they, they're they feeling like, oh, it's this this conspiracy against him instead of looking at, no, he's actually done wrong. Like, right. Well, the other thing is, if they supported him as president before and they uh-huh. see all of these charges being brought against him, I think a lot of them are rooting for him to win again now so that he can get right. in. But he can pardon himself and he can give them the hell and uh-huh. can give it back to him. So, you know, if they supported him when he was in office, it's kind of like now we want his retribution. He paints himself as a martyr and yeah. those that follow him buy into it. And so this all of this. And that was I think I think that was part of uh, some discussions that people were having. Um, pundits were having and whatnot as far as if they should even take these actions against Trump, because it would boost him as a martyr in his supporters eyes and make mm-hmm. these. You know, I, yeah. I'm on the side of that. No, he committed these things needs to be held accountable. And that means even if he becomes more popular among their eyes, he still needs to be held accountable. And I think he needs prison time. He definitely deserves well, Nobody prison. should be held above the law. Nobody. Yeah, nobody. no. So Georgia is actually in here as well. I'm scrolling through this now on page 12. Yeah, they it seems that Georgia him. and New York are the ones that are uh, going after him. Trying to but hold this him is down. a federal indictment coming out of D.C., right? Right. Uh-huh. But the head, the, the the special investigator, has uh, got his uh, his sea legs in uh, New York, Manhattan District Attorney's Office, Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, so they're going. Out. Uh, one of the things here they talk about: the defendant Trump signed a verification affirming false election fraud allegations made on his behalf in a lawsuit filed in his name against the Georgia governor. So. That's interesting. We remember all those lawsuits that were filed in an attempt to overturn the election results. They're using the fact that he was named, obviously, as a plaintiff, but he also uh-huh. affirmed statements in there. Right. So he signed affirmations, which are like affidavits under the penalty of perjury. Right. So they're using uh-huh. that as part of the criminal convictions that in these civil lawsuits he filed, he swore under oath that these statements were true, which they're alleging he knew were not true. Right. Um, Um, James in the chat says his, he says his supporters are getting indicted as well. And I think that's another point mm -hmm. why they would support him more because then they feel like they're under attack too. And now they're on team as this is a team uh thing. So we have to fight back. So we have to support Trump. He's, you know, um, and I think, I think he does it on purpose because he knows it's how people are going to, react to it you know it's scary i heard a bit of a speech he did where he said i'm being indicted for all of you so he's trying to make himself like jesus actually absolutely that's that martyr that that martyr um line of talk that he does and he does it to to good Very effect because a lot of people buy into it <laughs> yeah he does michigan, by the way. michigan does. is also part of this lawsuit it's okay. oh, really? oh. yeah michigan's a, a red state no. Yeah, there's a lot of conservatives up there. There's a lot no, of Michigan went blue, and that was one of the states he tried to overturn. Yeah, but I mean, like generally, they vote. They or at least before that, they voted a lot of Republican stuff. No, not really. I mean, maybe in some statewide races, but they've been a reliable Democratic state for a long time. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Trump won it once, and then he lost it. But I believe Obama got it both times. Look that up. Yeah, I thought maybe it's state that maybe there's their state stuff that's more red than instead of national. Yeah, let's pull up the 2016. I'm sorry, the 2012 electoral map, because I believe uh, it looks like they were exclusively Republican from 72 to 88. And then Democratic since, right? Until until 2016. 2012. No. And Trump flipped it in 2016. Right. So I'm looking at 2012 right here. Obama did win Michigan. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, they do they do worship him like Jesus. <laughs> uh-huh. says and he sets it up, he sets it up that way. It's there's well, nothing yeah. more, there's nothing stronger than somebody's uh religious like belief. Uh-huh. And, right. 
Pennsylvania and Wisconsin are in here as well. They're talking about the election challenges. So these are the states that Biden flipped that he's now trying to or he was trying to turn in 2020 because he knew if he got them back in his column, he could win. Right. So this this new indictment comes on top of the other 40 federal indictments he's already facing. Wow. And people still want him still want him as president. It's it's insane. This is these are the people who believe that the indictments are fake. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. They think they're they're witch hunts. They think they're conspiracy. Um, Or what I've seen also, they believe that some of it might be true, but he's being selectively prosecuted. They think that other presidents and presidential candidates have done the same or worse, but they're only hitting him with charges. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's what he, that's what he focuses on when he, um, if you hear him, uh, his interviews, he focuses on that. Like others have done this. Nothing happened to them. Why is it Without happening him. to me? But he's just making that up. Yeah. Like, no one else has done this. What he's right. Done. Who else has tried to overthrow the result of a legitimate election in the U S right. No one. And so. Um, and and, know, and then, he duped a lot of people into believing that the election results were fraudulent. Sure. To the point where even if even if conservatives or uh, Republicans will come out and say, no, what he's saying was not true. They say, oh, well, you've been, you know, you've been duped by the liberals. Was it red pill, pill, blue pill? I don't know what the terminology is, but yeah, they've got all these, these weird phrases. And even now that there's evidence showing that Trump himself knew he was lying about it and Trump knew that he lost, they don't even believe him, I guess. Yeah, it, it's it's crazy. I, wouldn't this be like the definition of cognitive dissidence? It's the definition of something. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got four charges in this new indictment. Right. So it looks like uh, I've been scrolling through it as we've been talking. It looks like that first count was the one uh, conspiracy to defraud the United States. That seems to be the one where they're going into all these different states and how he's trying to overturn the elections in these states. So it talks about all his efforts. And it, it mentions even Arizona in here, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Michigan. So it's pretty thorough his efforts in these individual states. Right. Because he was trying to win the Electoral College, obviously, by becoming certified as the winner in the states where he lost the popular vote. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And in that first one, they, they, they name six co-conspirators. Yeah. Attorneys, political consultants, justice Uh department official and a justice department official, um, several attorneys. So, I mean, this is, this is crazy. Yeah. So looks like they got, Tweets in here. That's interesting. Look at this. This uh, this is the world we live in. Are these known as what? Zeets now? What's the new word for this? They're tweets and they will forever be tweets. I don't care what Musk (laughs) changes the name of Twitter to. It's still Twitter. and They're still Uh, tweets. Well, I mean, this is just the world we live in, right? A federal indictment against a former president. And part of the indictment is his tweets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Mm -hmm. if vice president at Mike underscore Pence comes through for us, we will win the presidency. Many states want to decertify the mistake they made in certifying incorrect and even fraudulent numbers in a process not approved by their state legislatures, which it must be. Mike can send it back. And so they're talking about all the pressure he was putting on the vice president at the time to not certify the results, as is his duty under the Constitution. Right. Um, I, I find that so... I mean, not just the, that conspiracy itself, but I find it so entitled and narcissistic that Trump would expect Mike Pence to do this for him, especially after um, the attempt on his life, basically, in January 6th. Well, this was before that. Mm-hmm. The overturning of it? This was yeah. after? No, no. This is leading up to January 6th. Oh, oh that's about after. No. These are his efforts. In, so the election was in November. Okay, right? Between so November right. and January 6th, he yeah. was filing these lawsuits and trying to overturn the results. Yeah, January right. 6th that's is when the results right. were going to be certified by Mike Pence at the Capitol, and that's when they led the riot. 
Right. Uh -huh. Got it. Oh, Got yeah. you. But even even after that, he did expect Pence to like basically, you know, have his back. Yeah. And and didn't Pence even come out and say like he tried to have me killed? And now Pence is running for president too. Yeah. Poor guy. Yeah. Yeah. So count two conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding. This one is very brief. Of course, they re-allege their previous allegations as they do, and they say. This is all they say here from this is just okay, just so exactly what I was just talking about from on or about November 14th, 2020 through on or about January 7th, 2021 in the District of Columbia and elsewhere. The defendant did knowingly combine, conspire, confederate and agree with co-conspirators known and unknown to the grand jury to corruptly obstruct and impede an official proceeding. That is the certification of the electoral vote in violation of Title 18 of the U.S. Code. So that's count two they conspire to obstruct that certification. Right. Count three, same thing, obstruction of an attempt to obstruct an official proceeding. Is this the same one? Yeah, attempted to and did corruptly obstruct and impede an official proceeding. That is the certification of the electoral vote. So it looks like they gave him an attempt charge as well. Mm. In addition to the conspiracy, you also have the attempt to obstruct. So, a, so the conspiracy to obstruct is his efforts to plan with other people, right? Right. The attempt is, is just you know, his effort his to obstruct. His effort. Okay, count four, conspiracy against rights. So what is this? This is very so brief. That was the one you had questions about. Yeah. So it's, I've looked this up, 18 United States Code, Section 241. It says... He did knowingly combine, conspire, confederate, and agree with co-conspirators, known and unknown to the grand jury, to injure, oppress, threaten, and intimidate one or more persons in the free exercise and enjoyment of a right and privilege secured to them by the Constitution and the laws of the United States. That is, oh, here it comes. You ready? Drum roll, please. The right to vote and to have one's vote counted. That makes sense. That's very interesting. That makes really sense. interesting to me. So one of the counts is that he conspired with other people to effectively prevent people from voting and having their vote counted. Because if he's trying to overturn a lawfully held election, he's interfering with people's ability to vote in that election. Um, right. Wow. So, uh, right. so that's a creative I, one. I, I like that. One thing we didn't see in there was inciting the riot on January 6th. Right. Uh, yeah. And that's difficult. Maybe they thought that would be a difficult one to convict him of. Although sometimes you see prosecutors throwing in as much as possible. If there's a case to be made thinking, you, you know, maybe three or four of the five counts will stick or something like that. But uh -huh. you see that, you know, that's just not one of the counts. Incitement is difficult. You know, you have well, to. Maybe, maybe they'll bring that as a separate. Someone to bring that as a separate. Separate yeah, maybe. Um, it wasn't there, included in this though. This is all about his efforts to overthrow the election leading up to January sixth and beyond. Right. Uh, you would think it could be included in this. Yeah, you know, but like I'm saying, incitement is is tough, right? I know right. most people will look at that and think it's clearly incitement, but. The legal standard is pretty high because the First Amendment is very strong. Um, right. You know, yeah. context is important, obviously. But let's say we were here on nuance and we said something like, you know, you've got to fight to take your country back. And then people went and did something violent. Would we be held criminally liable for that? No, because those words are not direct enough. They're very vague. Right. Right. Of yeah. course, it's not quite that simple when you look at the context and you look at the fact that these were madmen who he not just on that day, but leading up to it, he aroused. And he again, he should have known. Right. Kind of like that drunk driving thing. You kind of know what you're getting yourself into, what you're arousing in these people by saying what you're saying. So that context is important. But as a general matter, to try to indict someone or convict someone of incitement, I think requires a very high bar because you are up against very strong First Amendment considerations. Right. And that could be what what pulled that out of this be. consideration um, or maybe makes it makes it something they need to try to focus on separately so that this could definitely get through versus right. being thrown out right. on that. It seems like that 
is pretty solid, but they've gotten this indictment. Maybe they don't want something like that to distract from that, because that's right. all maybe you would hear Trump say on TV, right. focus on the incitement part. And he said, listen, I just I didn't say you should go in, and break into the Capitol. I just yeah. said you should fight. I meant democratically, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So. Now, I haven't seen like this just broke, like you said, this just dropped, like, you know. Yeah. Where's the where's the funk flex bomb? We should drop a bomb on, on <laughs> yeah, the right? indictment. Yeah. Um, is there any in in the article that you saw in the Times? Was there any sort of indication or speculation on what would happen if he was convicted of this? I've seen that? No. And in fact, yeah, I believe in the previous indictment that we read, they put in the sentence schedule. Right. Right. That's not in this one. Right. No. As far as I saw, I did read through it pretty quickly just now. I didn't see yeah, anything I, talking about sentences. Right. I, I scanned it as well and didn't see didn't see anything. Um, but it doesn't need to be in the indictment. Right. So they do have the sections of the law that they're alleging he's violating. Of course, these are all federal laws and so you may find some kind of sentencing guidelines in there right but i'm sure the rest of that will come out um yeah. come out later um, see one thing that's interesting and people have always brought up this idea that he should be barred from running for president again and we've talked about the notion that constitutionally you can't bar someone from running just because they're convicted of a felony let's say whereas Mm-hmm. Under state laws, sometimes people are barred from that, and you could have issues with getting someone on the ballot in, in states. But when it comes to running for president, the requirements are very clearly defined by the Constitution, and there aren't many, right? You've got to be 35, a natural born citizen. That's pretty much it. Mm-hmm. But there is this idea that if you're convicted of insurrection under the 14th Amendment, I think it is, you could be barred from federal office. Mm-hmm. And I think, yeah, they should go after him for that, too. They should go after him for everything they can get. Absolutely everything. And, and you know, it, and I think a lot of people are unclear on this, and I'll admit I'm unclear as well. Um, uh, just as they pointed to the count for about, you know, uh, regarding the rights, people's right to vote and um, have the vote counted, how is it that they're allowed to take away the right to vote for people that are convicted of crimes and serve in sentences. And even after they come out, they're still not allowed to vote. Um, yet he can run for office and hold the highest office in the land where ex-cons yeah. can't even vote in many places. It's because of the way the constitution is interpreted. When the constitution sets out parameters for running for president, that's been interpreted to mean the only parameters, which right. I not say that word for word, but that's how it's been read and understood historically that the constitution says this is what you need to qualify for president we can't put anything else on it but that but how do they how they then i mean if the right to 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 vote is explicit in their constitution how can they stop people from voting if they've been convicted of of crimes because ex-cons come out and this is a fight in a lot of states where they're trying Mm -hmm. to get ex-cons their right to vote back yeah but is that if we're okay that's federal but what about the state law does the state right. say that they're not um, allowed to vote? Because it seems like a state would have some sort of um, say in that, too. Yeah. And there are restrictions yeah. of constitutional rights. They're not unlimited. Right. Like we talk about free speech is not unlimited. If it was, then he wouldn't be prosecuted for what he said about the election. Right. Uh-huh. Right. But they can. But I mean, how do they get. I'm just uh, and like I said, I know a lot of people have that same question. Like, how do they how do they make the two? You know, I know the wording that has very explicit it's very interpreted a certain way as far as who can run for president. Yeah. But isn't the wording similarly explicit as far as the right to vote? Well, no. None of these rights are unlimited. First of all, there, there's no where are you going to find the right to vote? Hmm? Where, where are you going to find the right to vote explicitly? There's no wording of that. I mean, you've got, for example, 
the 15th Amendment granting African-American men the right to vote. I mean, so, so the right to right. vote mentioned, but where does it say that it's unlimited? Uh, yeah, it, depends. Yeah, I I, it would depend on how it's written. It doesn't have to say that your right is unlimited, just like it doesn't say your right to run for president is unlimited. No, but it says these are the qualifications. And so that's been interpreted to mean the only qualification. If there are more qualifications, they would have put that in there. Uh-huh. Right. But I mean, similarly, I guess it could be also since it's not in there, it could be similarly interpreted that that doesn't mean that it's an unlimited right to run for president. But it's not looked at as a right to run for president. It's just looked at what the qualifications are. Right. Yeah. True. Yeah. You know, when talk, you talk about constitutional rights, there are fundamental rights and the right to vote is fundamental and they're non-fundamental <laughs> rights. But then you have to look at what the limitations are and they're never going to be unlimited because it's just not right. tenable. No right is unlimited. Like people want to say the Second Amendment is unlimited, right? We have the right to bear arms. And then conservatives make an argument that, well, all laws trying to abridge that are unconstitutional because it's very clear that it says we have a right to bear arms. But that's not how the Constitution works. You know, and that point you're making is one that I agree with, that if the Constitution says these are the qualifications for president, it doesn't have to be read to mean that there could be no limitations on those, Right. But that is how it's been interpreted, that these are the qualifications. Um, right. If there were other qualifications, it would be in here, but they're not. Right. You know, it's interesting, right, because then you could even ask yourself the question, you know, is your legal status even a qualification? I mean, you can even take it out of that realm and say, sure, he's qualified to be president under the qualifications, but he can't run for federal office because we've got a law now. Let's say they had a law saying you couldn't do that. Why would that be unconstitutional? I mean, Right. For argument's sake, right? You can say that you're not butting heads with that provision of the Constitution that sets out the qualifications. You're just putting restrictions on someone's ability to do so. I actually would agree with, to me, that makes sense, right? But that just isn't how it's been interpreted. It's been interpreted as these are the qualifications. Um, right. You know, if there were others, they would have to be in the Constitution. Yeah. I think because they're looking at it also as the people can elect whomever they want as their president, which is a very idealistic way of looking at things. I mean, it's kind of similar to the argument about term limits, right? People say, well, term limits are the election. Every two years, let's say for Congress or if it's governor, maybe four years, the people get to vote on the person they want in office. And if they don't like them, they can put someone else in. So why do you need term limits? You're restricting the people's right to put what they want in there, right? And that sounds great on paper, but we see the practice doesn't really work. The system isn't operating in a way that would make that tenable you know it's, it's kind of rigged in, in certain ways right so, i mean yeah. practice what happens in practice often uh, kind of derails ideology uh, so yeah yeah it's the same thing in in you know with the affirmative action fight where they're like oh well you can't show preferential treatment or whatever but it's like well in practice these rights are being violated and right. even law says they can't be, but they are being done. So there's something needs to be put in a place to to curb that. So, you know, which we should be, you know, we should be fluid in that way where we can deal with things that are being uh, violated if they're not being carried out the way that they should be. Right. Yeah. It will be really, I mean, how s- just the optics of, of a president or a presidential candidate Maybe not the candidate, so well, candidate, but even if it, say he did win and he was in jail, like what, like it's just yeah. really a weird space that we're in. Yeah, yeah, we would really see like a third world country, right? This, yeah. this, completely, <laughs> this is what this is what you know. People in the United States have always looked at other countries and been like, "Wow, how are they doing that? Like, why are they doing that?" Yeah. He would pardon himself, I'm sure, of the federal offenses. Sure. He might still have state offenses to deal with. All right. Sure, he would. Like, how crazy would that be? Could that even be possible? Like, say he gets elected and he's in prison. And so he gets elected, he wins, and then he pardons himself and he just walks out. Yeah. Sure. That would just be the most corrupt. But it's, it's crazy that this is what we're, we're faced with, this possible reality. And... 
the polling that came out today showed him in a dead heat with Biden right now. It's it's yeah. so crazy. We're supposed to be, yeah. or at least our marketing material <laughs> says that we're supposed to be the the, the beacon on the hill as, as in regards to, to to liberty and justice and fairness and equality. Like this is what we tried to market ourselves as to the world. But you know, it's like um, what's the old the old saying is like your your slip is showing, right? Yeah. Mm. We're showing it to the world. Like they're seeing, they're getting a peek behind the curtain. Like, you know, it, it's it's insane. This is going to be very interesting to see what ha- how uh, what the outcome of this will be. It's going to be really interesting. Because- and this is why they were his team was trying to delay um, till after the the, the election because the hope was that he would win and he could stop it all before right. he just gets yeah right. But it looks like you, the, the the more they say, the stronger he gets. His, his, I want to be clear, like it, amongst the Republican primary election. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Amongst, yeah but it's, it just seems like he just gets stronger among. Among them, yeah. I mean, DeSantis has to be kicking himself right now, for sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His, 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 his candidacy, his campaign is taking a nosedive. Like, they've, they've oh, yeah. got a bunch of people. Um, it's not viable. Even there's there was a leak of internal talk that, you know, if something doesn't turn around, they may have to just drop the campaign altogether. Right. I yeah. can definitely see if things don't change, he, he would most likely drop out before January. But there is still a lot of time. Things can change. We'll see what happens. Right. You know, really, there hasn't been a whole lot of coverage about the election. Believe it or not. Right. I mean, usually at this time of the cycle, it's all you see on the media. Right. Campaign rallies and stories, coverage of different primary races happening and it's happening in different right. states, polling in every state. And it's like a circus of political presidential campaign coverage. You're not really seeing it. Now you're just seeing stories about the indictments, which is another reason I think right. why he is at the top of the heap on the Republican side, because he's getting all the coverage. Not even you're not talking yeah, about it. It doesn't even exist. Right. right. He's, he's basically yeah. campaigning through negative press. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, and it's a, the same goes similarly for um, for DeSantis, because, like you said, there's really not a lot of talk about the campaign, the presidential campaign and whatever they plan on doing. The the news around DeSantis is all the controversial stuff that he's doing in Florida. Right. And right. So it's like the, the, the front runners of that of the, the, the right, like that's their that's their marketing at this point, you know. So I hope Biden doesn't cruise on that. I mean, like, okay, it's a, it's a mess over there, so I don't have to do a lot. No, you've got a job to do, dude. You've got to get on yeah. your campaign. Right. And, um, you know, I think people are probably burned out still from the prior campaigns. And it seems like the media took a different strategy this time where they almost are intentionally not giving it the coverage that they used to because it used to be all day long presidential politics. And now <laughs> maybe they're taking a step back from that. But I do think as we get closer, you're going to have to see more of it covered. And that could right. change the dynamics a little bit. Right. Yeah. I think part I think part of the Santa's strategy is to hang on to see if Trump gets uh, gets yeah. arrested or not. Yeah. And I hate to say it. I think RFK strategy is to hang on to see if Biden has a heart attack. <laughs> it, it could be. Yeah, it very well. Be. It could be. So anyway. I think we want to wrap this up. Yeah, we we. Yeah. I don't know what the time is, but I think we we've done better. Let's put we've it like done that. better. Yeah, we've done better. <laughs> Look at the clock now. We've done a little yeah. bit better. Yeah. So. so, Sheba, you want to give us the bottom line? Yeah, uh, wrap up everything. Well, Trump is. Uh, what can I? Well, Trump is doing his, uh, this indictments. These indictments mm-hmm. are helping Trump with his campaign giving him free publicity mm-hmm. uh, i hope everything works out for uh the country and what's happening now because as you said uh uh tim uh tim it's 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 that beacon on the light is is growing is, is dimming out mm-hmm. so i hope in some way uh the country can rebound from everything that's going on because we're not looking too good in the world as of today. Well said. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
and we and, have and, the capacity to do to do to do so much better. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's the scary thing, even about this poll that came out. I think it was about 43 to 43. But that leaves a, a large segment of the population who is saying we don't want either of them. Right. Uh, yeah. We want to do better. But ultimately, people are going to have to choose if those are the candidates mm-hmm. and we'll see where the dust settles. So, Jay, where can people find us? They can find us on YouTube at Nuance Show. Also, Instagram, the same handle, Nuance Show. Uh Go on there and get the replays of these uh, these podcasts. Also, wherever podcasts are on, you know, Apple Music, Amazon, Spotify, wherever it is, go on there, subscribe. It automatically gets pushed to your device. So, uh, yeah, hit us up, join in, drop some comments, whether they're hateful comments or supportive comments. Just engage, get in involved. Didn't we get hit with a spam bot last time? Um, we did have, I put up a couple of clips um from um our talking point when we were talking about affirmative action and um yeah it's like 10 comments in a row and all they said was what from it was from different people and there were 10 comments in a row and it was just what 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 um and i did i responded to each one of them just <laughs> what 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 what, what? Ish, ish and giggles i did that was what it is and one person did get back to me um on that i did meant, mean to mention that um, so he said, what I said, what, what? And then he responded, I'll tell you what, pointing to one rich person that worked in the entertainment industry as disproving widespread disenfranchisement is beyond lacking nuance. It's stupid. So but that was your point. Right. So he agreed with he agreed with it. Yeah. So I, I don't I don't think he got that. So I just responded like, you know, thank you for I'm glad you agree. <laughs> So, okay. Well, there you go. Yeah, people agree with us. Sounds good. <laughs> Other people also <laughs> called us dopes. So, but you know, yeah. But see, we're from hip hop, so I thought they were like, like dopes, like 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 y'all dope, both of y'all. Well, that's so how I responded. I was like, I was like, yeah, I think we're dope too. So, <laughs> go. as always, guys, thank you for tuning in. We've got work to do, and next week I'll be in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs>